Hi! So today, I am going to talk about one of my favorite places that I visited while I was in Greece. Um, I spent quite a bit of time on the island of Crete, and I traveled around the island, um, I would say pretty extensively. Um, while, um, while I was uh, in Heracleon, the, um, the plans were kind of up in the air still. So then I told my friend Kat, I was like, hey, I think I might want to visit this, this place called Sitia. So my friend Kat, she's, um, by the way, follow her, she is on Instagram, her name is Traveling Greek on there, and she has a pretty awesome account. But um, she was like, oh, I have a connection to Sophia, why don't we go down there and check it out? So we did. We took a bus from Heracleon to Sophia, and like as soon as we arrived, I was kind of like, wow, this village, not uh, a village, this town, this city, is um, it's really beautiful. And it's very, very remote. So like, it wasn't um, saturated with too many tourists or anything. It was amazing. Um, and here's what the town looks like. So the town is basically situated along um, a harbor or port of sorts. And um, it's a very quiet town. Actually, it's probably one of the quietest places that I've visited in a long, long time. But the roads are really narrow, they're fun to walk up and down and explore, and um, there's like some ruins there. Uh, you, can, you can go swimming right there in town, like literally a few feet away from like the main part of town. There's a beach where you can just hang out. And um, it's just a very beautiful, quiet place. If you're gonna go there, you go there because you want quiet. Um, now, in the surrounding areas, there's some pretty cool stuff too. There's a winery, there's um, like a monastery where you can visit because they actually produce olive oil and wine and the views are just absolutely stunning. If you go out into the countryside, some of those roads are terrifying, but it's so beautiful. Um, and quick fact um, that I learned from my friend, if you, if you are in Greece and you want some solitude, um, you can contact um, one of the monasteries, pretty much any of the monasteries in the country, and let them know that you need to kind of have some solitude. And they, you have to let them know in advance, but they will let you stay at the monastery and they'll, they won't charge you anything. But realize that that type of thing is gonna be very different than normal travel. It's gonna be a very meditative state and everything. So, um, Sitia was great. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was great walking around the city and everything. However, what was really cool was um, a Vi. Vi is a beach. Is a <laughs> Vi is a beach um, uh, about 45 minutes outside of Sitia, and it is it's very famous to in Greece, especially on Crete, um, because it's so secluded. It's hard to get to, but it is just stunning. Check it out. So where I took that video um, was at the top of this rocky outcrop and basically they have stairs set up so that you can walk all the way to the top. Of course, there's a fence that basically is to keep you safe so you don't go on the rocks which are very precarious, but you can go over the rocks and if you do and you walk around and you're safe, then you will get this view. Just remember that if you do this, it's at your own risk. Now, on the other side of those rocks that you just saw, there's a, um, a nude beach. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's a nude beach. So, <laughs> if you are looking to get some sun in, in your birthday suit, then that is definitely there. But the best part about Vi is actually Vi Beach. Um, so, the, the beach has a restaurant, it has a little bar, it has a little snack area, and you can rent chairs and stuff there. Now. When you rent chairs and stuff, they also have servers who will go around and ask you if you want anything. And so basically when you go there, you can just sit down on a, on a lawn chair and, and not move again if you want to relax really well. Um, the beach is beautiful. Here's the, the, the beach from Beach Level. So the beach is beautiful, but to me, the best part of the whole thing was the palm forest. There's a natural palm forest, and it's actually the largest and only palm forest, no, excuse me, it's the largest palm forest in Europe. 
um, and it's natural. Nobody really knows how it was grown there. There's legends about how um, pirates uh, might have dropped um, date palm seeds in the area. There's a lot of different ways that they think that it came into existence. But anyways, it's there. It's natural and it's protected for the most part, although the beach area is a little bit different. Um, as you can see here, the beach area is very well maintained and controlled, so the palms aren't growing wild, um, and it's easy to walk through. Check it out. So you can walk through the palms to get to the beaches, to the beach, um, and then it's actually, it's just so beautiful, it doesn't feel uh, it doesn't feel uh, real almost um, and then basically most people just go to the beach and they hang out you know you can see that the water is absolutely clear and and whatnot but the uh, what's really cool is if you take the time to go and explore the actual palm forest what you can access a lot of it like I said is protected well and it actually has a fence to prevent you from going in but if you like you can see here if you if you uh, go into the palm forest. It's just very wild. Um, so you can get that little wild feeling and, and, and enjoy that view and everything without getting too dirty. <laughs> and even if you do, there's the ocean right there. Uh, and the palm forest actually goes right up to the ocean. So it's really cool. Um, I would totally suggest going to um, Sitia and Vai. And, and, and you probably wanna take at least two to maybe three days. You probably don't need more than that. Um, to see what is there, to experience everything that there is experienced there, because there's, there's the city of Sitia, there is a winery at the monastery, and there's an olive oil production facility, um, and they still produce olive oil um, using some methods that they have used for hundreds of years. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then Vi Beach is beautiful. You might want to spend a whole day or even two days on the beach. So that's why I say maybe take three days um, to go to Vi Beach um, and Sitia because you'll, you'll, you'll want that time. And in the summertime, the beach is packed. All the locals go to that beach and there's almost nowhere to park. So um, you'll have to plan, take that into consideration. Um, and it is very remote. So if you're like in Hanya or um, Rethaminon uh, or, 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 or Heracleon, the best way to get there is to take a bus from the city that you're in to Sitia. And then during the summer, um, there are a few methods of getting from Va, uh, from Sitia to Vai Beach. Um, but yeah, it's very remote. Um, it would take effort to get there. Um, so that part kind of puts people off, I guess, sometimes. But definitely everybody should go because Vai is amazing and you definitely need to discover Vai. Um, I think a really cool way to do it might be to rent a car or even a motorcycle and then you can drive through um, Crete from say Heracleon to uh, Sitia and then Sitia to Vai and the, the drive is just incredibly beautiful. Um, it's shocking, like the landscape is just over the top. I've never experienced anything like that before. So anyway, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful and I really hope that you guys make it to Crete because Crete is like almost a separate country from Greece. Like it has a very sort of Greek culture but it's got its own Cretan culture, its own Cretan cuisine and it's excellent. You guys, um, everybody should go there uh, to, to experience it at least once because it's an incredible um, part of the world. Uh, and, and you know, it's the stuff of legends. Um, Crete was part of mythology and everything else. So yeah, so head to Sithia, head to Vi. It's definitely worth exploring. All right, until next time. Bye.